What's going on everybody my name is Rico welcome back to my channel for those of you that are new here my channel is about vlogs series and tutorials and in this episode we're going to edit a photo that I've taken with the DJI Mavic Air in Norway. Right so welcome to the first episode of my new series called Norway by Air. In the next few weeks I'm going to edit pictures that I've taken in Norway with the DJI Mavic Air. I hope you guys like it so without further ado let's start and this is the image that we're going to work with today as you can see it's very flat it's not really popping let me show you guys the end result so i'm moving this slider to the right i've got the snapshot on the left like so there you go so this will be our vinyl result let me deselect the snapshot, let me go to the orientation and let me compress the history stack. And before we go any further, let me tell you guys that I've put all the modules that we're going to use in my favorites. This is the favorites group. If you don't see them over here, you can find the modules in this list over here. These are the different groups that you can choose from. So you've got the basic group, the tone group, the color group, the corrections group and the effects group. Or you can go to more modules and then find them in the list down below so let me close that one down now let's start with the first one and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just do some basic adjustments to this image and for doing that we need the basic adjustments module so here it is the basic adjustments module let me activate it if you don't have this module because you're using Darktable 2.6 Please visit this video up here in which you can download the 2.7 version and then you can follow along with this tutorial. So when I look at the histogram I see that the highlights are being clipped and the shadows aren't being crushed. So actually that's a good thing but I do want to make a shift in the black point so I want to drag this to the left. But I'm going to do so by increasing the black level correction by scrolling the mouse wheel button away from me. I'm going to do so a fair bit actually like so and that already changes the image a little bit and I want to change the exposure a little bit as well so let's say we're going to change it by 0.05 and let me increase the black point some more actually there you go that looks a little bit better I'm going to keep everything as is except I'm going to change the highlight compression to 35% for this so now you saw a shift over here but that's okay You'll only notice in the sky and it doesn't look artificial so I'm going to keep this as is. I'm going to move the middle gray a little bit because if you move this to the right the image will become more dark. And if you move this to the left the image will become a little bit more lighter. So let me put that on 10%. I think that looks pretty fine. Let me decrease the brightness as well of this image. If I increase it you see what happens. So I need to scroll the mouse wheel button towards me this time to decrease the brightness of this image and I'm going to keep the saturation as is simply because this image already has a lot of color and I'm going to adjust the colors manually by using mask I'll show you guys later on by using the color zones module so now I'm going to close down the basic adjustments because that's done and now what I want to do is I want to show you a quick before and after so if I click this mask manager over here you see that we've got a flat image and if we apply the basic adjustments to it the image already stands out a little bit more it's got a little bit more contrast so speaking about contrast i want to increase the contrast some more and for that i'm going to use the local contrast module so let's open it up let's activate it and for those of you who have watched my videos over the past few months know that i absolutely love 150 percent and that's what i'm going to do but usually what i do is i increase this percentage and i leave everything as is but because this is the local contrast module, I can actually determine where the contrast needs to be applied. So I can tell it to not apply it to the highlights and to not apply it to the shadows and to just apply it to the midtones. I want to increase that by zero dot, well, I think five maybe. That might be a little bit too strong. So let's go for 450. That's a little bit better. And now what it did was it only applies the local Laplacian filter. I hope I said that correctly. And if not, I apologize. It only applies it to the midtones of this image. And I can show you guys what happens if I drag this all the way to the left. You see that everything becomes very blurry. And the only thing you can see is like the sky and the river over here. So let me put it back to 0 .0, wait, 0 0.450. There you go. And now let's close that one down and go on to the next one, which is the haze removal module. 
going to open that one up and it's a very strong module and the reason why i want to use this is because i see some haze over here which has to do with the fact that the light comes in and then it reflects on the water and that's why you get that blue haze in the distance so i'm going to activate it but obviously this is far too strong for the image so i'm just going to put it on 0 15 just a tad bit let me show you guys before and after so i'm going to deactivate the module there you go and i'm going to activate it there you go the changes are very subtle but you can definitely tell by looking at the distance and now what i want to do is i want to use the color zones module so i'm going to open that one up and what i want to do is i want to make the water stand out some more color wise and i don't want it to affect the sky so since both of these are blue i need to use a parametric mask and even a drawn mask so for that i'm going to scroll down click this symbol right here draw on a parametric mask i'm going to click it and i'm going to drag it down and i'm going to use the brush this is the brush now if i scroll the mouse wheel button towards me the brush size increases and if i scroll it away from me it decreases if I hold the shift and scroll towards me, the feathering size will become less. And if I scroll the mouse wheel button away from me, the feathering area will become bigger. So let's put it like so. And this brush is a little bit too big. So there you go, that looks fine. So now I'm going to just paint over this area like so over here. It's a little bit too big actually, but just for the sake of this tutorial, just make sure that you don't fall off too much. Uh, because you can definitely tell with one of the modules that we're going to use later on. So there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now I've covered everything. And now I'm going to click the symbol because I don't want to see what we've done. So I'm going to click it. And I'm going to use the parametric mask because I want to affect the darkest pixels in this area. So let's get this color picker over here. Let's place it over there. And let's go to color picker and put it on area. And just create an area like so. So it's got some dark light and dark pixels and it says that this is the area that should be selected. So I'm going to place this over here. If you drag the bottom one, the top one will follow. There you go. So now what I want to do is I want to see what I've masked out. And for that, I'm going to scroll down, click this yellow symbol right here. And there you go. So you see that this part of the water has now got a mask on it, but it doesn't get this part. So going to create a new selection area and now I see things have changed so I need to move this over here like so same goes for this like so maybe go a little bit like this to feather it a little bit and what I want to do is I want to increase the feathering radius of this mask there you go and I want to blur it a little bit as well maybe feather it out just a little bit more there you go so let me deselect it so now we're back to the regular image I want to decrease the feathering size of the brush a little bit. So I'm going to click the symbol. I'm going to click inside the mask like so. I'm going to hold the shift and I'm just going to scroll the mouse wheel button away from me. And as you can see, the feathering is becoming less, but we're missing out this part. So for that, I'm going to hit the control, add another node. I'm just going to drag it downwards like so, so that we still cover this area. So let me deselect that and now let's go up here and let's figure out where these colors are they will probably be over here but let's check it out color picker put it in the water move it around a little bit yeah, it's very dark this is in a lighter area okay so i want to increase this we've already applied a mask so i'm going to place a point over here place a point over here i'm just going to drag this upwards like so and now you just saw the water change let me show you guys a before and after so i'm going to deactivate this module there you go it's pretty dull actually as well i'm going to activate it and now it stands out a lot more so that's it for the color sounds module so let's just close that one down and this image has got a lot of noise so i want to reduce that i don't know why it's a daytime shot it's shot with my mavic air obviously but we're going to get rid of some of the noise over here so for that i'm going to use the denoise module and the denoise module has got a couple of presets which i like to use which is a chroma which you use on the first instance and a luma for the second instance so let's just click it activate it now let's click this symbol right here new instance and now go over here click the second one and now both of these are being applied as you can see 
and the noise has been reduced over here let me show you guys a before and after so i'm going to select the color zones layer there you go and i'm going to click the denoise layer there you go so that looks a lot better and the image is really standing out right now so i want to put some emphasis on the water and i want to darken this area you can do that by using an exposure module with a gradient filter to just darken this area and darken that area but for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to use a vignetting so let me activate that i'm going to drag this to the side like so and i'm going to decrease its scale a little bit there you go so move this like so that looks a lot better let's drag this to the side again just to make sure that this won't be affected so now the sky is a little bit more dark the bottom is a little bit more dark as well so let me close that one down now we've added a vignetting and the final thing that i want to do or the final two things that i want to do is i want to use the tone curve in order for me to get the water to stand out and i want to use a lens correction just to make sure that we don't have any distortions in this image so let's go to the tone curve module let's open it up and I want to use a mask again, but we've already masked out the water with a brush. So I'm going to use the same mask. So for that, I'm going to click on this, Drawn Mask. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit and then go to Drawn Mask, No Mask Use, click it. And I'm going to use the same mask or shape. Oh, same shape as the color sounds. Click it. And now you see we've got the same mask again. So I'm going to scroll back up. I'm just going to drag this up a little bit, like so, to make it stand out. Let me click on this to make sure that we don't see the brush anymore. Now let's see if we pull it up a little bit more what happens. So this is way too much. And if I drag it down, it becomes very dark. And you can see the lines of the mask. So we need to feather this out as well. So I'm going to drag this up, like so, to make it stand out. And I'm going to drag this down. And then increase the feathering radius. There you go. You saw it change over here. And that looks a lot better. Now the water is really standing out. It's basically the eye catcher of this image. And the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to scroll back up. Click it. Close it down. Open up the lens corrections. DJI fixed lens. DJI fixed lens. Click it. There you go. You saw the distortions go away. Let's close it down. And now let me show you guys a before and after. So I'm going to take a snapshot. I'm going to select the snapshot. I'm going to select the original layer. I'm just going to drag this to the right. As you can see, here's the original layer. One more time. Dragging it to the right. And this is the final result. And that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And I guess there's just one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop a new video. And until next time, doei!